Oh no! I've been abracadabbered into a fancy feast and second rate sidekick! It's common for just about any animation studio to slip in some references that only the grown-ups will get. Even the usually squeaky clean Disney has its fair share of dirty jokes. So, of course, it's to be expected from its edgier cousin, DreamWorks Animation. I'm Keefe Nosy with Wicked Binge, and this is DreamWorks Animation Adult Jokes. Cleanest to dirtiest. Whew. Cool, got to be. Shrek, I think you grabbed them. Like we did with our Pixar Dirty Jokes video, we'll be going through the DreamWorks library chronologically and ranking the adult jokes in each film from cleanest to dirtiest. Starting with the studio's first feature, Ants. Tastes like crap. One of the more innocent jokes, one of the bugs claims that the food tastes like crap, but if you know about some bugs like dung beetles, it won't surprise you that another is absolutely delighted by this fact. Hey, it is crap. Not bad. Swearing. It's a mystery to us how DreamWorks' first animated movie got away with all the blatant profanity therein. Hell, damn, and even the B word are all said at some point. Hey, what are you bitching about? Perhaps most memorably was Mandible's response to a soldier surviving his suicide mission. Good. Damn good. Z's uh, drinking habits. While at the bar with Weaver, Z makes a remark that he has a thing for drinking from the anus of another creature. Okay. We're not here to judge, but if you're asking, yes. Z, we will call you crazy for that. Bala's erotic fantasies. Finally, at one point in the movie, Bala tells Z after an argument that he can forget about her letting him be a part of her most erotic fantasies. Yes, those exact words. You know, I was gonna let you become part of my most erotic fantasies. The crazy part is that's the censored version of the line. She originally specified most erotic sexual fantasies. Thanks, Bala. We couldn't tell. Which brings us to film number two, The Prince of Egypt. Zipporah's introduction. When Prince Moses first meets his eventual wife, Zipporah, she's brought to Ramses in chains. The implication is that she's presented as a concubine, who Ramses generously sends to Moses' quarters for the evening. Happy honeymoon. Thankfully, Moses has integrity. He allows Zipporah to escape her life as a concubine and later makes her his wife with her father's blessing. Based on how her hair looks in the morning, it's clear they had a fun evening. An unimpressive view. In the chariot race between Moses and Ramses near the start of the movie, Ramses Ramses managed to get the high ground, at which point Moses is able to look up his royal skirt and remarks that Yes, but it's not much of a view! <laughs> Ouch. Every inch. But it later seems like Moses isn't one to talk when he's being cleaned by some women of Jethro's house. He tells them that they can stop since they've cleaned every inch. Ladies, you've cleaned every inch of me. <laughs> Whoa! His reaction when they reach his crotch proves that he was mistaken, and the girl's giggles imply that perhaps he didn't have much of a view down there either. The next film is Road to El Dorado. The perks of being a god. During a musical number called It's Tough to Be a God, Tulio's friend Miguel has a pitch on why being a god is actually worthwhile, despite their lack of such intense acting experience. Besides, we're supposed to be gods. Free healthcare, dental insurance, paid vacation, and no shortage of women, which seems to be his main focus. The the intense drinks. Another perk is the feats you get to enjoy, complete with lovely drinks that totally don't include alcohol at all. The fact that Tulio and Miguel passed out after drinking some powerful fruit juice is nothing more than coincidence. Definitely. Zekel Khan's Heavenly Elixir. Another perk would have to be the aromas you get to experience, like when Zekel Khan takes a whiff of his elixir. His reaction is, well, he sure seemed to enjoy it. Almost swear words. While not as infamous for actual cursing as ants, Road to El Dorado does have a couple scenes that cut it pretty close. After narrowly avoiding a ship crash, Tulio exclaims, Holy ship! Later on, when Miguel confesses a past betrayal regarding a girl in Barcelona, Tulio says, You f before Zekelcon interrupts. The armadillo sex scene. Not even two minutes into the movie, a song about the gods' creation of El Dorado includes a scene of two armadillos going into a bush, shaking it until several babies come out. If we have to explain that one, you're a little young for this video. Tulio, you lucky god. When Tulio and Chell are engaged in an on the floor, barely off screen makeout session, they're interrupted by Zekel Khan's approach. Chell asks what he would think if he saw her with one of the gods, to which Tulio replies, uh, Lucky god? Damn, that's smooth. Also notable is where Chell's head appears to be before Zekel Khan's interruption, meaning things might have escalated beyond making out, possibly. Where is she keeping them? Speaking of Chell, she's going to take our spot as the movie's most adult joke. That outfit would not fly in modern day kids' movies, and when she swipes Tulio's loaded dice, Miguel instantly questions where exactly she was keeping them. Where is she keeping them? 
Okay, staying on the topic of beautiful characters, let's talk about Shrek. I'm here till Thursday. After Shrek's iconic brawl in Farquaad's tournament, he says, I'm here till Thursday, try the veal. Thank you very much. I'm here till Thursday, try the veal. <laughs> this is an innocent tongue-in-cheek reference to the cliche of performers at nightclubs and other yeah. venues making recommendations to the customers. Totally clean, but not something the kids would get. But look at the location. Staying on the cleaner end of adult jokes, when Shrek reaches the dragon's castle atop a volcano, he assesses it as pretty good property, just in a really bad location. Sure, it's big enough, but look at the location. <laughs> Maybe Shrek 5 should be an HGTV event. Saving his ass. With Shrek having a raunchy sense of humor for a family film, and one of the main characters being a donkey named Donkey, it's no surprise how many times puns involving the word ass are used. Well, I have to save my ass. From Shrek calling Donkey a stubborn jackass, to claiming he has to save his ass, it's clear what Shrek means but it's got a double meaning that gets a chuckle out of the grown-ups. What a load up. In anticipation for the iconic SOMEBODY once told me <laughs> introduction to Shrek, it's easy to forget Shrek's assertion that Fiona's storybook is a load of sh uh, poop. Of course, this is covered by the flush of Shrek's own load of poop, keeping him safely in the PG rating area. Donkey's quality time with Dragon. When Donkey gets captured by Dragon, things seem to be escalating too quickly for the poor guy, with him saying he's not sure if he's ready for a commitment of this magnitude. I'm not, not emotionally ready for a commitment of uh, this uh, magnitude, really. Thankfully, he's ready to settle down with her later in the movie, so the writers aren't the only ones having fun with an ass. Monsieur Hood likes to get paid? In one line of the often forgotten Monsieur Hood musical number, he says he likes a little spice on a saucy little maid. Then his merry men speak up to explain that he likes to get laid. I mean, paid. That's that's what he meant. That's what he said, right? He said he likes to get paid. All right, come on, man. You aren't hiding it as well as you think. Keep your feet off the grass. One of Duloc's finest tourist attractions is an adorable machine with little singing puppet guys. They're here to tell you how things are in Duloc. Keep your feet off the grass, shine your shoes, wipe your face. What? What did you think they'd say? Ass? Why do we need to wipe Donkey? He's his own man. Or ass. I mean, Donkey. Donkey's wet dreams. After an evening of looking at the stars, Donkey falls asleep and has some very pleasant dreams. Don't take our word for it. Donkey himself says he likes it like that. No, baby, I said I like it. A Shrekshin. When Shrek puts his weight on a tree to act as a bridge for Fiona, she brushes her hand against his back and his expression seems to imply that the tree is not the only source of wood on that bridge, if you catch our drift. Man, Donkey just couldn't catch a break in this movie, huh? Blue flower, red thorns. After Fiona sends Donkey on a scavenger hunt to keep him away so she can pull an arrow out of Shrek's butt, he returns to find them in a rather compromising position. But he also assures them that they can just ask him if they need some alone time. If you want to be alone, all you had to do was ask, okay? What a bro, Donkey. Lord Farquaad's name. Okay, we'll walk you through this one. First, take Lord Farquaad's name, Farquaad. Now, say it out loud. Good. Now, take the R in Farquaad out and say the result as loudly as you can, preferably in your loudest Shrek voice. You're welcome. Snow White's difficulty level. When the magic mirror is showing Farquaad his options for a princess, Snow White is among the recommendations. His advice is that even though she lives with seven other men, she's not easy, which may be why she wasn't the admittedly desperate Farquaad's first choice. Show me the princess. Once Farquaad chose Fiona, he ogled her picture on repeat. Again, and again, and again. His glance under the covers implies that he's, um, pitching a tent, so to speak. And if Magic Mirror's expression is anything to go by, he's seen things I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Farquaad's compensation. Possibly the most iconic adult joke in the entire series, Shrek questions whether Farquaad's gigantic castle is his way of compensating or something. Do you think maybe he's compensating for something? <laughs> this could be attributed to his height, but at this point he hadn't met Farquaad yet. We'll have to go with Donkey's theory that he has a really small... Uh, I wonder what Donkey was referring to being small, I don't know. Let's talk about the often forgotten Sinbad Legion of the Seven Seas, briefly, because it only has one adult joke. Sinbad's souvenir. When Marina is going through some of Sinbad's stuff, she picks up a bejeweled bra, which she describes as a souvenir, more than likely from a pit stop on one of his journeys. On to another not so highly acclaimed DreamWorks film, Shark Tale. Dap me up, Sykes. When Oscar tries to show Sykes how to pull off a slick handshake, he reassures him that his clumsiness is totally fine because a lot of white fish can't do it. 
Hey, don't sweat it, Sykes. A lot of white fish can't do it. But it's only made weird if you consider Sykes is clearly brown. An empty sushi restaurant. Somebody needs to tell this poor employee that it's all right to have a poor business. Not everyone underwater can compete with the Krusty Krab after all. Wait, they serve what here? Okay, I might have an idea of why you aren't getting business, man. The whale special. When a whale customer orders a good wash and lube, Angie offers him a special kelp scrape. The whale is delighted, in his own words, and I'm feeling lucky. The Undersea Gossip Magazine. In a blink and you miss it scene, a magazine cover includes some interesting details, from a debate on whether or not smoking seaweed is legal, to quotes from OJ Shrimpson denying he was at the scene of the crime. I guess he wasn't after all. He was found not guilty. That was a facepalm. But let's return to the Shrek series with the sequel Shrek 2. Happy Honeymoon, again. After the first movie's happily ever after ending, Shrek and Fiona check into a hotel where they don't emerge until morning. Safe bet they cemented their marriage inside. Shrek, how could you? Props to Fiona for not holding it against Shrek that he ended up in the arms of a mermaid during their on-the-beach makeout session. Pretty darn unlucky to have accidentally cheated so early. Fiona does launch the mermaid into the ocean, though, where she's eaten by sharks. The DUI test. It might seem silly to think that it's possible to ride a horse under the influence, but tell that to the police who stopped Shrek and company on their attempt to evade Charming's capture, complete with a backwards recitation of the alphabet, one of the most common parts of a typical DUI test. You still look like an ass to me. Shout out to Puss in Boots for keeping up the trend of ass puns when Donkey's test of Shrek's transformation potion seems fruitless. I look any different? You still look like an ass to me. Never gets old. Wolf, you pig. The big bad wolf is apparently not into his own species. Near the beginning of the movie, he's seen reading a magazine called Pork Illustrated featuring a pig in a bikini. Wolf, you sicko. That's not mine. Legalized catnip, man. It's not hurting anyone. Why do you guys have to be so hard on Puss in Boots for having some? He said it's not his, right? Catnip. That's uh, no mine. You can't prove him wrong. White Bronco. The DreamWorks crew really had it out for OJ Simpson, apparently, as when Shrek was being pursued, he was riding Donkey, who had been transformed into a white horse. The news refers to him as evading in a white bronco, the vehicle OJ took off in before his famous murder trial. Shrek's fan club. One of Shrek 2's most memorable aspects was the human version of Shrek, who was instantly fawned over by some excitable ladies who insist on massaging him and being his new true loves. When his now oversized pants fall down, his three would-be dates are very excited. Viagra. Apparently, if Shrek wanted to take advantage of her offer, Fairy Godmother's potion shop would have been the right place to look. One of the bottles is labeled Viagra. No euphemism, no pun, just, just Viagra. Shrek drank what? Honestly though, if Shrek had bought that Viagra, it would have been less than the container of milk he ordered at a bar, which had a picture of a bull on it. Bulls do not have udders. It's not milk, but it's definitely white. Fairy Godmother's first song. Even before her reveal as the main villain, Fairy Godmother made quite an impression with the wishes she pitched to Fiona, from the sexy man-boy chauffeur Kyle to the idea of writing her name on a bathroom wall for Happy Ever After, Give Fiona a Call. To write your name on the bathroom wall. For Happy Ever After, Give Fiona a Call. Come on, Fairy Godmother. Fiona is married. On to the jungle with Madagascar. There's always a plan B. Near the end of the movie, when Alex is enjoying a feast prepared by his friends, King Julian assures him that if he doesn't like it, there's always another option, holding up Mort as a substitute. There's always plan B. <laughs> For Alex's sake, knowing what we do now about Mort's borderline satanic origins, it's good they didn't pick the alternative choice. Oh, sugar, honey, iced tea. Next, we move on to a heartwarming reunion between Alex and Marty on the shores of Madagascar. Unfortunately, Alex's heart is more like burning with rage than warm, which prompts Marty to pull out his acronym skills. Oh, sugar, honey, iced tea. Clear S-word substitution aside, a sugar honey iced tea is about the most southern thing I've ever heard of, though. I could go for one right now. Mother. Honestly, we'd be frustrated enough to swear to if we were given a rectal thermometer for our birthday. Marty's cut off shout of mother. You know, that was my first rectal thermometer. Mother. Okay is clearly not just a call for his mom. Let's move on to Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Were-Rabbit. Call her Totty. Like Tulio and Shrek before him, Wallace seems to be quite the ladies' man. Lady Toddington insists on him calling her Totty. Call me Totty. 
a British slang term for an attractive woman. For good luck, when Victor returns to the town after supposedly slaying the were-rabbit, the villagers insist on him kissing their vegetables for good luck, one of whom even suggests him to kiss their artichoke. Remember to listen before you act, kids. Hashtag Gromit2. Always remember to ask for consent before touching somebody. When Gromit dresses as a female rabbit to lure the were-rabbit, he gets his tail grabbed, to which the were-rabbit gets promptly slapped. We knew the were-rabbit was the villain, but have some standards, sir. For shame! Those with nut allergies beware. Being a claymation film, Wallace and Gromit unsurprisingly focuses a lot on visual gags. One example being Wallace covering his privates with a box that says, may contain nuts. If Toddy's blushing is any indication, we can upgrade that may to uh, definitely does. Bago shite. Staying on the trend of visual gags, a poster is seen in the background advertising bago shite horse manure. Can't get much more on the nose than that, really. Um, unless you removed the E, I guess. <laughs> Ravaged in her bed. As if the were rabbit's behavior weren't problematic enough already, when the villagers find their crops destroyed, one man's wife stands up with two destroyed cabbages clutched to her chest, lamenting how his wife's brassicas ravaged in the night. On to Over the Hedge. Hammy's request. If you ever lose sight of your nuts, do yourself a favor and maybe ask a doctor to help you find out what's wrong. Oh, wait, Hammy probably just meant the edible kind here. At least, I sure hope he did. Squirrels don't get neutered, right? Not, not usually. The emergency exit strategy. Well, maybe there's one context the double meaning would make sense in. RJ instructs his crew to start licking their own private areas as distractions if they get caught on their heist. What are you doing? Well, you said we should. Like no! Stella's role. As it turns out, Stella is capable of making her own distractions too. In the main heist of the movie, she's instructed to distract the house owner's cat. Considering his dazed expression and her smudged makeup, it looks like the cat truly got the cream here. And back to Shrek we go with Shrek the Third. Bootery to Hootery. Prince Charming's defeat has not been a graceful one. He successfully rallies other villains and gets them to wreak havoc across far, far away. In one instance, they rearrange the letters of a place called called Bootery to spell Hooters, based on the American chain restaurant famous for its scantily clad waitresses. Get him some jammies! When you've got Donkey, you don't need an alarm clock. He's willing to wake Shrek and Fiona up for their big day, but given his reaction on pulling off the covers, it's likely he might want to gift them an alarm clock so he no longer has to be alarmed by- Time to get moving! Ah! In one scene, Donkey states that he hasn't been on a trip like this since college. Man, I haven't been on a trip like that since college. Either he was quite the adventurer in his college years, or some good old LSD helped him to feel like he was. You're effed. Fiona's revelation that she's pregnant hits Shrek like a ton of bricks. Puts in Boots seems equally concerned, telling him that he's in a situation similar to a loud foghorn noise. Fun fact, some people think Puss was originally going to say the F-bomb here, but the horn sound was so darn funny they kept it in. Smoky Carriage. At Arthur's school, the sight of a smoky carriage seems a little nerve-wracking at first, but don't worry, there's no fire, just a little bit of blaze, as the woozy students who come out imply. When a male bee loves a female bee. Finally, when Shrek has a nightmare about his future as a father, he wakes up in a cold sweat wondering how this happened. Thankfully, Puss in Boots is there to remind him of where babies come from to answer the question. What a real friend. As wonderful as the original Kung Fu Panda is, we only have one adult joke to discuss with it. Watch very closely, Poe. During a demonstration of Tigress's flexibility, Poe is paying close attention to her skills. Yeah, her skills. Definitely just her skills. He doesn't want to fall behind, after all. The next film is Madagascar 2, or Madagascar Escape 2 Africa. That's the one. How in the... Hello? Upon crash landing in Africa, Gloria seems to be the most concerned about their course of action, asking Alex just how the... Hello? Are you listening? We're trying to explain the joke for you. And you know wow. what? This is not JFK. What the hell, low? Oh, forget it, let's move on. Moto Moto. He likes him big, he likes him chunky. And as we grow older, this Will I Am cameo is more and more understandable. I like him chunky. I like him big. His love of plumpiness, chunkiness, and other similar attributes makes it clear where his preferences lie. Maternity leave? During a negotiation with the chimps to fix the broken airplane, Skipper is pressured to meet their demands of a maternity leave. Maternity leave? You're all male. But being the tactical mastermind he is, Skipper quickly glances under the table to see that they don't have the parts needed for such a vacation. Unfortunately for us, Shrek Forever After also only has one adult joke to mention. My donkey fell in your waffle hole. You know, I'm just, I'm just gonna let you use your imagination here. There are at least 50 ways to interpret this, and not one of them feels right to settle on for the meaning of this incredible quote. My donkey fell in your waffle hole. It seems like the trend is for more recent animated films to have fewer adult jokes, so let's talk about the classic, Megamind. Hi, 
I waited. Hey, come on, minion. I like that song. Quit interrupting it or just go to a place with better reception. There are way worse swears in other movies on this list, dude. Censor those. The original Puss in Boots movie is up next. Fun night, eh? When Puss in Boots wakes up next to a female cat, fastening his belt immediately after, it's pretty clear they had some fun the night before. No. The real mystery is what exactly his belt is even holding up. Raul's tattoos. Whoa now, Raul. Puss might be down for a good time, but he definitely doesn't want to see your golden egg tattoo. Okay, maybe he would, but if it weren't for where you were about to unzip to show him. Onto another sequel, Kung Fu Panda 2. Where do pandas come from? Ah, good question, Poe, but Mr. Ping doesn't know. He can tell you that geese hatch from eggs, though. Just don't ask where the eggs come from, all right? Here lies Mantis. He never scored. When Mantis's life is in danger, he laments that he's not going out the way he wants to, having his head torn off by beautiful Lady Mantis. I always thought I'd meet a nice girl and settle down, and then she'd eat my head. So sad. Since this is what female mantises generally do to their mates, it's clear Mantis is upset about dying a virgin. That's fair. We may have skipped the first film in the franchise for its lack of adult jokes, but there is one in How to Train Your Dragon 2. Why Gobber never tied the knot. As tension escalates between Stoic and his long-lost wife, Valkia, Gobber confides in Hiccup that such conflict is why he never tied the knot, along with... This and one other reason. A Viking's gotta keep his options open. I guess, gotta respect the honesty. Onto penguins of Madagascar. Seize your coconuts! When Skipper commands his troops to seize their coconuts, as always, they're ready to obey his order. Quick, boys! Grab your coconuts and hold them tight! Even Rico, who places them on his chest. He's a little confused, but he's got the right spirit. There was no mating. Skipper is a man who always keeps his story straight, literally. When Dave calls Skipper his zoo mate, Skipper assures Northwind that there was no mating. We were never mates. Basically one big no homo. The next film we have is Mr. Peabody and Sherman. You mustn't touch yourself. Everyone knows the age old time travel rule. Never touch your past self. I've got to get you out of here before you touch yourself. And now we have a new rule. Don't word it like Mr. Peabody does in this scene. Oedipus Complex. Oedipus and his family's dynamics prompt an allusion to Oedipus Complex. For those who are familiar with the story, you know what we're talking about. And don't even get me started about Oedipus. Let's just say that you do not want to be at his house over the holidays. Bill Clinton's done worse. Okay, maybe not worse than the last entry, but Bill assures Sherman that he's done worse when he pardons Sherman at the end of the movie. Next up, we have Trolls. I think I had a sarcasm once. Uh, that's nice, Cooper. Thanks for sharing. And thanks for using the wrong word so we cannot have that image in our heads. One of the best recent DreamWorks films, next we have The Bad Guys. Well, that ship has already sailed. While not explicitly stated, in fact, we might be reaching on this one. Yeah, well, that ship has already sailed. Diane saying this could suggest that she had some sexual interest in developing for Wolf. Keyword, had. Finally, we get to last year's hugely successful Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. One hell of a movie. This is one of my absolute favorite DreamWorks movies. I was enjoying it so much that I barely even noticed Puss in Boots saying hell at one point. What the hell are you talking about? And I certainly didn't notice Death wondering why the hell he had to play with his food once Puss defeated him. Since it was in Spanish, of course. No hablo espanol. Stop and smell the posies. On Perito's peaceful path to the last wish, the key to progressing is literally to stop and smell the flowers. Be the pocket full of posies. But Stella seems a little unhappy with this plan. All I smell is bullsh- Perito's first names. Oh, and before he was Perito, the little guy was called by many names, such as dog, bad dog, stupid dog. Hey you, you there, get out, leave it. Drop it! Butt nugget, something for brains, and more. There's also the absolute roast session he gave the three bears later in the film. Man, for, for the nicest character in the movie, he's got words so harsh they had to beep more than a broken microwave. 